So once again, welcome to our KIT257 Material Chemistry Lecture. So today we are going to start with a new chapter. Uh, it is basically on uh, properties of material. So in this chapter, basically we have a few subcomponents. Um, and the first one that we are looking at is on mechanical properties. So this uh, is considered one of the important topics as well, because in order to uh, understand the behavior of the material that produce from various processes, I think in the earlier uh, lecture that you've learned with uh, Dr. Chua, you've learned how to produce polymer, you've learned how to produce composites, uh, metals and alloys and everything. So uh, after we have produced all these kinds of uh, different materials, it is important uh, to understand not only the structural, uh, but also in terms of the behavior and also the properties. That is why uh, mechanical properties is considered as one of the important uh, key in order to understand uh, the behavior, whether uh, it will actually uh, experience these two phenomena, elastic behavior and also plastic behavior. Okay, But before we understand these two terms uh, thing in depth, I guess it is also important to understand what will be the main component in mechanical properties that is actually related with stress, okay, strain, uh, um, and various kinds of uh, deformation or uh, loading uh, deformation, right? So there's a few things that we are going to address uh, towards the end of this chapter. The first is actually on the stress and strain. Okay. Uh, what are they and why are they used instead of load and also deformation? Okay. And apart from that, uh, as I told you, the two important uh, things that we need to understand is uh, elastic behavior. Okay, when a load uh, are small, how much deformation will occur, and what materials deform least. And then we also have plastic behavior. At what point does permanent deformation occur, and what material are most resistant to permanent deformation? And finally, uh, we are going to look at also. Uh, terms like toughness and also ductility. Okay, what are they and how do we measure them? Okay. So these are a few things that uh, perhaps um, I hope you guys can understand can digest later. So we have a different types of stress and also strain. Eh? So uh, part of it is actually known as tensile. Eh? Tensile load, compressive load, shear, and also torsional. So what does it mean by all these different types? Eh? Tensile actually means that uh, the load eh, produced as an elongation and positive linear strain. So in this case, imagine that if you have okay, one object as it is, so the load is actually pulling. Eh? Okay, you see a force. Eh? It's been uh, projected, going upwards. Okay, initial shape of this material will be in blue, but after you pull, eh? okay, so there's a like a force that pull uh, these materials, and what going to happen is that you will see. There's an elongation. Okay. That produced after the force being applied. And the shape of the object is no longer uh, similar. Okay. The object is now being uh, slightly thinner because it forms uh, elongation and deformation. So that is why the area. Okay. Um, produced over here is actually reduced. Okay. Reduce. Apart from that, we also have uh, compression or compressive load. 
So compressive stress or strain, it is basically meaning that uh, the force being pushed, okay, force is being pushed, going inside the materials. Initial uh, size of the object or dimension of object is indicated in the dotted line. So when you push the material, okay, you can actually imagine that you are holding a plasticine, eh? plasticine or any kinds of object that is easy to be pushed, okay, clay or others. So what happens is that you will see that the, uh, the dimension of the object is no longer becoming the same because uh, the final length, eh? uh, this is actually the initial length, okay, initial. The final length is actually not the same. Eh? It will be shorter as compared to the initial. Meanwhile, for the tensile, earlier on, we'll see that um, the initial length is actually uh, shorter, but when you uh, pull the material, it becomes longer. So this is actually the clear difference. Compressive load produces contraction and a negative linear strain. Why it is negative? Because it is being pushed inside. Okay, so uh, this actually uh, explain why you have a linear negative strain. Apart from that, we have a so-called shear strain or stress. Shearing it means that you. Um, apply some force uh, horizontally, okay, horizontal force applied, eh? like a box, eh? you have a box and then after that you apply a force at the side, okay, and what happens is that uh, it will actually form some uh, deformation, okay, you'll see that the shape is no longer the same as uh, the shape initial, okay, Right? And uh, for this kind of um, sharing, uh, uh, the sharing strain, you'll see that there's a deformation. So this deformation is actually noted for sharing strain. Okay. And finally, we have uh, a so-called torsional deformation. Torsional deformation actually means that you have uh, a force that is applied, something like... Uh, Mixing, eh? you stir it. Okay. So this actually um, will give some deformation okay, in terms of the uh, area or maybe the uh, uh, the pi value that give uh, some difference. And some basic definition for stress and strain. So the first one, maybe you have a stress. Eh? What does it mean by stress? So stress is basically not something related to your mental, eh? but this is actually more to mechanical. You will see that stress is actually a force over unit area. So that is why you see a lot, eh? even you've learned this uh, in physics, eh? that stress is equal force over area. So this is actually a very classical concept of uh, stress. The maximum stress, uh, a material can stand before it breaks is known as breaking stress or also ultimate tensile. Okay. And later on, you will see a profile of a mechanical uh, stress behavior performed under analysis. So stress is located okay, over here, stress. And then you also have strain. Stress. Sigma and strain epsilon. You have some profile like this, maybe. Okay. So ultimate tensile strength is actually the maximum. Okay. The maximum stress. Maximum stress that it can hold, eh? the object can hold. And after that, what happens is that it starts to decline because of uh, it already deformed or maybe already experienced breaking and whatsoever. Okay. So similar to um, the types of strain that I have explained just now, so we have uh, different types of uh, stress. We have 
tensile. Okay. We do also have uh, compressing, shearing, and also torsional. And quite similar definition, tensile strength actually means that stress that tends to stretch or lengthen uh, the material. This is actually due to the effect of pulling, eh? pulling effect. Okay, pulling effect. Compressive stress, meanwhile, actually means that the stress that tends to compress or shorten uh, the materials due to pushing. Shearing stress is that uh, the stress that tends to shear the material that acts in plane to stress area at right angles to compressive stress or tensile stress. So this actually happens when you have a force that is applied to the side. Okay. And strain is actually meaning that the formation of a solid due to stress. And strain normally it is um, it's dimensionless. Eh? Dimensionless. Meaning that it doesn't have any unit. No unit. Okay. Because we know for stress, we have uh, force. Eh? Force normally in Newton or weight and then you have area so probably you have a unit of uh, newton over uh, meter square okay or it could be also uh, depends on the load eh? like uh, pound or whatsoever okay so moving on to plastic de uh, deformation Okay, so briefly, I think in the previous chapter, I have explained what does it mean by uh, plastic deformation. So plastic deformation actually means that when you apply uh, the force eh, or maybe the load, uh, after you have released the force or maybe the load, what happens is that uh, the material returns to its initial uh, shape or dimension. So there's no deformation, uh, there's no changes. Uh, lengthening experience by the material. So this actually uh, known to be for elastic deformation. So can you give some examples of uh, elastic deformation? Can someone give an example? Maybe just to ask you. Um, spring. 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 Okay. Uh, other than that, Maybe uh, Amalia, Amalia, Shanas. Ada tak? Ada tak? Okay, so can you give a one examples of uh, elastic deformation? Maybe anything? Mm. Okay, so I think some in the chat box uh, like Nur Ain and also Hasnun have mentioned about spring and also rubber. I will explain this later on. Uh, spring rubber actually, um, yeah, maybe we, we, we can see it elastic because when you put it, you release, it will return to its uh, basic shape. But anything that you think uh, object that would be rigid, that when you pull uh, the material, it doesn't give any changes. I think spring rubber, uh, when you pull it, it do give some lengthening effect, yeah, right? Okay, so one of the best example is that uh, ceramic. Eh? So you have a piece of uh, ceramic, okay, or rock, eh, for example. So if you pull, you you wouldn't see any changes at all because uh, the material is very strong, okay? and uh, normally materials that is uh, having brittle. Eh, um, Properties will actually experience uh, elastic deformation. Okay, so I give you some examples. Okay, metal. Metal can also be uh, plastic. Uh, ceramic. Okay. 
Okay. So this is something that you know it is quite hard but brittle. So with this kind of uh, properties, it will actually ex uh, exist as um, uh, elastic deformation. Okay. So that is why elastic deformation means that the process is reversible. So uh, the arrangement of particles over here, we see that uh, initially it is quite close back. And then when you apply some force, maybe there's some lengthening, but very small, minimal. Lengthening, okay, and when you release, okay, the force, what happens is that, or unload, it means that uh, it will return to its original state. So, the profile of force over st uh, strain, eh, you will see that for linear elastic, it will be linear, and non-linear elastic will be uh, bending like this. So, what would be the best example of non-linear elastic? Uh, this will be related to metals, eh? uh, spring, eh? rubber band, okay, because it forms something like, um, it, it has some, uh, how to say, we call it as uh, offset, eh? there's some offset, okay, okay, it experiences lengthening, and when you re release eh, with a minimal uh, load that it can sustain, when you release it, it will return back to the original shape. Linear elastic, uh, these examples could be for ceramics. Okay. Uh, different types of minerals. Okay. This one is actually for linear uh, elastic crystals. Okay. And we are moving on to the next one, plastic deformation. <clears throat> so plastic deformation is in return to what uh, we have explained just now. Okay. Um, what happens is that when you apply a force, when you apply a force, of course, uh, there will be some deformation. So this will be the deformation produced. Deformation. Use. And at the same time, uh, it will actually give some permanent effect. Eh? So this permanent effect actually occurs when you release or unload the force. So it didn't actually return back to its original shape. Okay, it didn't return to... And it has uh, a permanent effect that we call it as plastic deformation. Okay. So for plastic deformation, <clears throat> the profile is slightly different. Okay. Um, as compared to linear uh, elastic deformation. Initially, when the small uh, amount of force is being applied, you will see that uh, it will actually produce a linear curve. So this linear curve is actually related to um, elastic deformation. Okay, elastic deformation. Meaning that at the lower uh, amount of force, when you release it, it still can uh, perform as elastic. But when it exceeds okay, some certain uh, amount of uh, load, what happens is that uh, this deformation, elastic plus plastic will happen. So this is actually the region where plastic deformation occurs. Plastic deformation. Okay. Until it reach the maximum tensile or so-called ultimate tensile stress. And finally, what happens is that uh, if you release um, the uh, force, it will return back. Okay. But you already have some dis displacement, okay, which we call it as plastic deformation. Okay. Right? 
Any questions so far? Anything? And some basic formula that you need to uh, probably memorize for tensile stress, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is actually uh, force eh, over area. So this area is actually the area of original before loading. Okay. And the unit could be in pound over inches square or newton over meter square. So this is actually... Uh, the most important unit that you need to uh, remember. Okay. Meanwhile, for sharing stress, okay, sharing is it still the same. Anything that relates with stress, it is still force over area. But uh, for sharing, it is related with sharing force. Okay? And always noted as tau. Eh? Tau is equal to sharing uh, force over original area. Unit is still the same, okay? Newton over meter square or pound over inches square. So simple common uh, states of um, stress. You can also have uh, simple uh, tensile or tension. Okay, so this example is actually um, shown in uh, scale lift. Eh? You have a cable, okay, that pull. Uh, this rotor and this impeller eh, is where the torsional because it's rotating. Eh. Okay, so as I told you, torsional is actually due to rotational force apply. Okay, so the cable is actually being pulled. Okay, at both end. Okay. That is why you will see that the cable will have an area eh, uh, or changes in terms of the uh, area size before and after. Meanwhile, for torsional, the drive shaft that uh, actually carried the passenger will actually experience uh, different types of deformation due to the uh, rotational force. And other type of example, you have like compression. So compression, uh, one of the examples is that you have a load, um, a huge load on top, and then after that, uh, applying some force onto it. So this is actually uh, from Arches eh? uh, National Park. And you see a, a rock is being put on top. So this definitely will give a very high amount of force or will result in compression. So this material in the middle is actually experience compression or compressive stress. And other than that, you can also see it from the bridges. Okay. So the arch, okay, the arch uh, that is located underneath the bridge, you have some pillars uh, connecting the arch between the, the roads. So this also uh, will experience Compression because the load is actually coming from the top. You have a vehicle that moves on top of the bridge, and then uh, this arch is actually uh, the main structure that holds uh, uh, the bridge together. And this is where uh, compressive stress occurs. And most of the material used for um, to withstand the force should be something that is hard, uh, not easy. Uh, I mean, uh, experiencing anything with regards to uh, plastic or other types of deformation. And finally, we have um, by actual tension that comes from uh, pressurized tank. So what does it mean by by axial tension? Because it means that you have uh, different uh, maybe uh, orientation of stress or uh, tension that can occur. So imagine that if you have a pressurized tank and if there's a leaking, maybe a leaking over here, so you'll see that the air, the trapped air or the compressed air inside this pressurized tank will come out at any direction. Okay. 
So that is why it is known as to be a multiple of biaxial tension. And finally, we have this hydrostatic compression. So hydrostatic compression, one of the best example is for fish underwater. Okay, because um, when you put your hands eh, inside any pools, eh, so the fish actually is very, it's quite alert and they can actually sense a force that actually comes from uh, in front, from the sides, from the top or from various direction. Okay. Right. So other than that, uh, you can also have uh, a so-called uh, strain. Eh? So Tessa strain can be noted as epsilon equal to delta over uh, L naught. Eh? So delta is actually the formation and L is actually uh, the length, eh? length initial. So the deformation is the resultant uh, or the resultant um, changes that you'll see. Okay. And you have various kinds of uh, strain. You can also have a shear strain. That is actually noted as gamma equals to changes of x over y. Okay. Changes of x is actually changes of um, maybe uh, the distance or probably the, uh, uh, the length eh, of the shape. And then Y is actually the height of the uh, object or the material, which is also equals to tangent theta. Eh? So tangent theta. Theta is actually the uh, angle produced when you actually apply shearing st uh, stress at the side. And finally, we can also have lateral strain. So lateral strain is noted as epsilon Y that is equals to uh, minus delta L over W. So W is actually the width initial and delta L is actually the uh, lateral deformation experienced by the material. Okay. And why it is negative? Because as I told you, um, because of the compressive stress and that is why uh, the, the material is actually having a negative sign. And as I told you, strain is always dimensionless so that is why it doesn't have any units. Okay, so once we have understand the basic concept of um, formula eh, in uh, stress and also strain, it is also important to understand what kinds of tests that we want to do. For example, if you already produce uh, uh, any types of polymer from extruding process, eh, from uh, blending process and whatsoever, or molding, and what happens is that the material that you want to produce, you want to test. Okay, uh, the, of course, the mechanical properties. So that is why stress uh, strain testing is important in order to do so. And part of the requirement is that it needs to follow a standard procedure. You need to follow ASTM methods in order uh, to fulfill or to meet the uh, global requirement. And so if you produce uh, different types of polymer, different types of metal, uh, when you test it, it is important to understand that this material should follow uh, STM standards and from there uh, once it has been tested we can actually identify whether uh, the material actually meet the requirement or not okay so for uh, the ultimate tensile machine eh, or so-called utm okay so this is actually the basic setup okay so you have um, a load cell Okay, and you have also extensometer. Extensometer is actually a device that um, measuring the extent or the deformation of your specimen or your samples. And your samples is actually uh, have to be uh, on a fixed uh, dimension depending on the methods that you use and the STM methods that you use. Some actually requires you um, a specific dimension. Okay. And you will have this uh, moving crosshead uh, where this is, I mean, uh, the, the tensile uh, force applied. Okay. If you remember, tensile actually means that you pull eh, uh, the material at both ends. Okay, So that is why it is important to have this crosshead. 
one of the typical tensile specimen is noted as here. Okay, you have this uh, like a dumbbell eh, shape specimen with a fixed dimi dimension or diameter. Okay. And from here, we are going to measure what will be uh, the length eh, of this material having a very specific uh, dimet uh, diameter of 0 0.5 okay, and a fixed uh, length eh, around 2 uh, quarter inches. So once you perform uh, the stress strain testing, this are the profile that you get towards the end okay so um, it depends on the types of material that you test it will actually give um, basically different patterns and different design so most of the uh, brittle eh, materials as i told you like ceramics eh, ceramics okay will actually produce so-called uh, this linear deformation or linear elastic pattern so it's actually not bending quite straightforward so this actually means that uh, the material experience elastic deformation okay there's also plastic um, deformation as i told you earlier it will form linear and then after that uh, plastic deformation will occur until it reach the ultimate tensile strength so this is actually the ultimate tensile strength uts and after that when you release uh, the force uh, what happens is that it forms necking and there's a permanent uh, deformation that you'll see at the end Okay, so elastic, this is actually for non-linear, eh? non-linear elastic deformation. For example, uh, rubber or maybe you have like spring eh? or whatsoever. So just before uh, it breaks, eh? okay, so you have this quite a, a flat eh? linear and then after that it goes up. So different materials like rubber, okay, rubber, uh, metals, eh? carbon steel, aluminium will have a different profile. So this is part of the examples. So glass eh? or brittle material, you'll see that it only forms linear elastic deformation. Meanwhile, for rubber uh, and metal, it starts to form a bending shape. This is actually due to the plastic deformation that it starts to form. So stress strain curve are often eh, used to define several mechanical properties of polymer. Informa information that can be obtained from um, uh, stress strain curve is basically young modulus, tensile strength, elongation at break, and also yield strength. Okay, we are going to look at this um, definition one by one. What does it mean by young modulus? Eh? Uh, tensile strength innovation at break and yield strength. Okay. So this is also another uh, curve, eh? examples of stress strain uh, testing. You will have a curve that forms uh, initially a linear deformation and then after that, uh, plastic deformation. Okay. Ultimate tensile strength, as I told you, is the optimum. Eh? Is the optimum or the uh, maximum amount of uh, strength that it can withstand. So this is where you read eh, the uh, UTS value. Okay, the optimum. There's no unit over here, but uh, normally we just read from the stress. Eh? So if the question asks you what would be the ultimate tensile strength of this material, okay, and given that uh, a curve uh, as this, so you can actually read through and report the stress value, right? the maximum stress value uh, over here. Okay. Young modulus in return is actually the um, gradient. Eh? 
yan model is. Okay. It's actually the gradient in the elastic deformation curve. Uh, so you have elastic deformation that normally linear. And when you calculate the gradient, this actually will, um, will be equal to the Young modulus value. Or sometimes we call it as modulus of elasticity. MOE, modulus of elasticity, is also related with Young modulus. Okay. Metals occurs when a noticeable necking start. Ceramic occurs when uh, cracking propagation start. And polymers occurs when polymer bed bones are aligned and about to break. So this is actually the specimen, the types of specimen that you see uh, initially. When it actually uh, experiences elastic deformation, there's not much changes. And then when it enters uh, plastic de deformation, you will see that now the, the length is different. Even the width is also different. It becomes slightly thinner. And once uh, it reaches the ultimate tensile strength, it starts to form necking. Yeah? Necking. Okay, you see necking over here. Okay, this region. And finally, uh, due to the further necking, it will actually break or fracture. So this fracture uh, is the ultimate uh, strength, eh? not stress, ultimate strength of the materials. Okay. So some comparisons of tensile strength of a different materials. We have metals, we have um, ceramics, uh, polymers, and also composites. Of course, from all these uh, materials, you can see that uh, the one that has a very high uh, tensile is, of course, materials such as composite. Eh? Because composites, you will put the enforcing material to withstand or to make the uh, materials become tougher. Right? So you have like carbon fiber, right? aramid fiber, e glass fiber, all these are actually having a very high tensile. Okay. And followed by different types of uh, materials. Okay. You can have a very uh, high tensile of metals and also uh, ceramics, diamonds. Okay. And finally, the least uh, that experience uh, or having a tensile strength is polymer because polymer can easily uh, deform and to occur a plastic deformation. Right, so plastic deformation of sem semi-crystalline polymer. So what does it mean by semi-crystalline polymer? Semi-crystalline polymer, it means that uh, these materials or this polymer actually contains uh, crystalline and also amorphous uh, material. So it is called as semi-crystalline polymer. Eh? Right, so if you have semi-crystalline polymer, uh, for example, like... Uh, LDPE, eh? um, long density, uh, low density uh, polyethylene, eh? MDPE, medium density polyethylene, HDPE, high density polyethylene, all these are actually uh, semi crystalline polymers. Okay. And uh, if we want to understand uh, the plastic deformation of this type of polymer, you have to uh, know what will be the stages during the plastic deformation. So the first one is actually the elongation uh, of amorphous tie chain. Okay. This um, uh, actually occurs after, um, how do you say, plastic deformation. So this region is elastic. And when it starts to enter plastic deformation region, plastic, is where the elongation of amorphous tie chain occurs. Okay? So you will see that um, the chain in neck align around uh, elongation direction. So you will see that there's a very minimal necking start to occur over here. Okay, And if you look into the microscopic um, I think image, you'll see that uh, this is where 
the amorphous region and this is actually the crystalline. So the amorphous region is start to tangle and uh, it start to uh, form, how to say, uh, elongation. Eh? So this elongation, the amorphous region, is actually due to the uh, first stage of deformation. Okay. And after that, uh, it will actually experiencing tilting eh, of namela uh, crystallites towards the tensile axial. So uh, there's a tilting eh, of the axial. Eh? Start to tilt. Okay. Tilting of lamella chain falls during the second stage. And then after that, separation. So you see that now the crystalline will be uh, or the crystalline blocks will be uh, separate uh, segmentally during the third stage and finally stretching eh, of uh, crystallites and amorphous region along the tensile axis. So this could be a complete um, complete uh, plastic deformation. Okay, and why it's actually uh, giving a permanent effect is because of first uh, the block of crystalline have been separated separated okay and apart from that you will see that there's a tilting eh, of lamella uh, chain eh? which actually give, um, I think, quite obvious uh, permanent uh, defects on the material. Okay? Right. So, a few examples before we end our lecture. So, a metal wire is 2.5 millimeter diameter and 2 meters long. A force of 12 newton is applied and uh, it's stretched to 0 0.3 uh, millimeters. Assume the material is elastic. Determine the first the stress in the wire, and finally the strain in the wire. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So what kinds of information that is given here? So you will see that uh, it gives you the diameter. So from diameter, actually, you can calculate area because the key in order to calculate stress. Basically, you need force and also area. Force is given, 12 Newton. Okay. And area, what you need to find is now area. And wire, eh? wire. what will be the dimension of wire? Wire is actually uh, formed in cylindrical shape. Okay. So the area that we are talking about is actually the area of the circle. So that is why the formula is pi. Four, right? or maybe pi r square right? so pi r square will give you the area okay. which is actually equals to 4.9 millimeter square then if you put uh, the values eh, inside then what happens is that you will get the stress is actually equals to 2.44 newton over millimeter square or equals to 2.44 megapascal. Next, we are going to identify the strain of the wire. Okay, so strain, remember a formula for strain is equals to delta over L. L is actually the initial length. So what will be the initial length? Initial length is actually 2 meters. Okay. And delta is actually the deformation. So, it is also given here, it says that the wire stretch to 0 0.3 mm. Okay, so this is actually delta. So, strain epsilon is equal to 0 0.3 over 2000, which gives you 150 micro epsilon. Okay. So basically, <clears throat> linear elastic properties, as I told you in the um, profile of stress to strain, yeah, 
you have the so-called modulus of elasticity, also known as Young modulus. So this value is actually calculated from the gradient of the linear region. It is an important parameters for computing elastic deflections and materials that are stressed in tension and at relatively low levels, stress and strain are proportional to each other. Okay. You can actually calculate um, modulus of elasticity by applying Hooke's law. So probably if you understand uh, spring uh, during high school and uh, physics, you may heard about Hooke's law, eh, which says that uh, sigma is equals to E multiplied with epsilon. So sigma is actually stress. Stress is equals to E, eh, capital E. Capital E is actually the modulus of elasticity or Young modulus multiplied with strain. Therefore, in order to calculate um, modulus of elasticity, if we rearrange this formula, you will get sigma is equals to epsilon. Okay. So this is a basic formula in order to calculate modulus of elasticity, which literally, if you translate it, it will be the changes of stress and also changes of strain. That's why if you remember, as I told you, when you have a profile of stress over strain, the linear region, if you calculate the Gradient, this will give you modulus of elasticity. Okay, so this y2, y1, x2, x1. Modulus of elasticity is equal to changes of stress over changes of strain y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. And the unit of uh, modulus of elasticity in gigapascal or PSI. Deformation in which stress and strain are proportional is called elastic deformation. The greater the modulus, the stiffer the material or the smaller the elastic strain. Okay. So elastic deformation is non-permanent. When applied, uh, load is released, the piece returns to original shape. So this is what I've mentioned to you guys early on. Okay. Okay. And we also have this so-called uh, Poisson ratio. Eh? So Poisson. Uh, Poisson is actually the name of a person. But in French, it's actually literally translated as fish. Eh? Okay. So Poisson ratio, uh, also known as the coefficient of expansion of the transverse axial, is the negative ratio of transverse to axial strain. When a material is compressed in one direction, it usually tends to expand in other two directions, perpendicular to the direction of the compression. So Poisson ratio is normally related to uh, compressive stress. Okay, the plot that you are going to see over here is actually a negative plot, unlike uh, tensile. Eh? And tensile, normally you will form uh, a positive linear, where for uh, compression and stress is normally a negative plot, which from here you can uh, calculate the Poisson ratio. The Poisson ratio normally calculated as the strain eh? the, um, of the material. So you have nu, eh, not v, eh, nu is equals to minus epsilon L over epsilon. And a normal uh, range for uh, different types of material, the Poisson ratio of metal is normally located at 0 0.33. Okay. Ceramics at around 0 0.25 and polymers at around 0 0.4. And the unit is still uh, dimensionless because we are using strain eh, as the key uh, factor to calculate this ratio. That is why Poisson ratio has still, I mean, dimensionless unit. Okay. So I guess maybe in terms of the comparison uh, between of the material, maybe we can continue this tomorrow. Okay. But basically, what we have learned today, some basic definitions of um, uh, stress and strain, and how it is important for any types of material to be tested 
Eh? This is actually to understand the uh, the behavior of a material. We also have understand today what does it mean by elastic deformation and also plastic deformation, and some basic um, I think formula in order to calculate stress and strain, as well as um, modulus of elasticity. And you have also seen some examples of strain uh, or stress to strain profile eh? if you have different types of material where does this uh, elastic uh, deformation occurs plastic deformation occurs and how to explain uh, plastic deformation for a semi-crystalline polymers eh? due to the um, elongation eh? tilting of lamina chain eh? separation of block uh, crystalline and finally the orientation okay of uh, block segments So I guess um, maybe I'm open for any question on the floor. Anything that you want to ask? Okay, so if there's no further question, then I guess I will jump the class. And before that, maybe you can scan through your attendance for today. I will stay back for a while if you have uh, further question. Uh, you can privately uh, ask me. But if no, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention for today's class and hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Welcome.